Coming up on Super Boothers, Brian Salinas just returned from a trip out to the UK where he was at the photo booth show in Europe. We asked him about the experience and he tells us what he learned about the market in Europe. Stay tuned. Welcome to Super Boothers. My name is Ryan. And I'm Ismail. I just got back from a fabulous vacation. <laughs> I can see you smirking while you say that. <laughs> such, such glee and joy. At all your I had such a blast. It was so much fun. So for everyone that doesn't know, tell them where you went. Uh, everywhere. Where didn't I go? Uh, I went to Photo Show Europe. And that is in the yes. UK. So right? I flew into – so it was in Leicester, United Kingdom. I flew into London, spent a couple of days with my uh, – a couple of friends there, and I stayed at their house. We had dinner. It was such a blast. I did some sightseeing. I got to see the Queen. We had tea. It was fabulous. Then I took the little Harry Potter trip train all the way up to so this is the thing so i was on the train listening to the harry potter soundtrack going from london i guess i was going to hogwarts or i thought i was going to hogwarts or something that it was it was like i was in the movie it is so beautiful over there i i literally cannot even and how far is london from? uh it was about an hour train ride show um but i f- went up on a sunday and i learned so much about british culture it's frightening um, so apparently whenever you're going to places like these on a Sunday, that's when they choose to do construction on like the railroad tracks. So I went for, I got on a train. They took us 45 minutes out of town. We got off the train. They shoved us on a bus and then I had to go on a bus from there to Leicester. But then they dropped us off at the train station, which took about like quadruple the amount of time that it should have taken us. But nonetheless, it was great. I went to dinner with Adam from React Media. We had such a blast. It was great to get to talk to all the UK people that you just kind of like, you know, to chat and see online, but never like get to meet in person. So that was really cool. Mm. Now, I grew up as a Harry Potter nut. And I saw the picture, so I know that you went to platform nine and three quarters. It was a nightmare. How was that? It really was because there was like a bunch of nine, 10, 11 year olds waiting in line, and there was like 35, 36, 37, 38, 39, 40 year olds waiting in line. It was it was it was an interesting mix, but um, it was great. I had a blast. We had so much fun. I, it was my first time to the UK. Uh, it w- it was just an unforgettable experience. So thank you, Photo Booth Show Europe, for having me. And I I found out the schedule maybe like a week before I think, and the show started at nine thirty in the morning, and that was when yours truly was speaking on a Monday for everyone. And I'm like, um, I am not a morning person. Why would you? Why, why would you pick Ryan P. Salinas? Well, to speak first thing in the morning. <laughs> he wants you to wake everybody up. That, and that, give that boost. That energy. apparently was the thought process. Um, I did my uh, talk on automating your workflow, which it was only a forty-minute version of it. Uh, I'm going to be doing the same at my masterclass in Australia, which tickets are now on sale and can be bought at boothcon.com.au. And I'm a little bit excited to do that one in full. Um, A lot of people ask me how to be more productive, how to make the most out of your time, how to get more clients as a result of that automation. Um, I'm really excited to do the full, full, full full version. And before we get into the show, you also went other places after the show, right? So what so, are all the stops that you made? So the way how it worked was I time. went to – for everyone that's in the UK, I guess I have to talk a whole bunch of UK stuff just so that everyone knows. 
<laughs> all the lovely things that I experienced. Um, so whenever I went to London, uh, we were, gosh, we went to Harrods and that, I think I spent about three hours there. Um, funny story. We were walking literally everywhere in London that day. And by the time we got to Harrods, I like had a little headache and I was just kind of like feeling a little sluggish <laughs> and Claude was with me and he goes, do you want an Adderall? I was like, just give me a half. So I got a half, a half, a half Z, a half Z of Adderall, a half Z? popped it. And that was another thing. I had way too much sugar on this trip. So I was drinking Coke. I, I try not to drink sodas, but anyways, I was drinking Coke because that's the only thing I knew how to order because I can't order Dr. Pepper in the UK because it practically doesn't exist. But I ordered, I ordered a Coke. I had sugar. I'm on Adderall. I went to Harrods. I had a blast. I was running through that place like I owned the joint. It was so much fun. Uh, but yeah, so by the time we got to Leicester, uh, we went to – I went to dinner with Adam, and we went to a lovely place called The Counting House, um, in which we were there for night two as well. And um, we'll talk about that in a, in a moment. I mean I was uh, just going to say for – Go ahead. I would have loved – to be there. Um, but for everyone listening who may not know, there's a reason that I'm not at the show and I probably may not be at the Australia show. It's- it was my fault. It was, this is all my fault. It really is. And I will, and I will take full responsibility for this. It's not as everyone seems to be thinking that Ryan has gotten so annoying that I can't stand being around. And that's not, that's not the case. <laughs> I actually just welcomed our first daughter, um, a couple weeks ago after this recording. So, that has definitely hampered my travel for now. Um, hopefully, everyone's understanding. I think I think people are. So, so. We, we did we did the math on it, and that's a booth con, baby. I will neither confirm nor deny <laughs> these accusations. Well, we could do we can do math. So that's that's how this works. Um, but funny enough, I was so a long time ago. I was texting Ismail's wife, and I was like, "We I have the perfect way." we can trick Ismail to going to Australia. Sure enough, that plan backfired. <laughs> and now I can't go anywhere now. And now you're with child. <laughs> yeah. And, and then Justin's like, oh, are you going to come to the next booth con? I'm like, Justin, I don't know if I'm going to be making any more booth con trips. <laughs> anymore. <laughs> it's all canceled. Uh, but we'll, we're going to try and do some stuff. Um, but we're I actually, Ismail doesn't know this yet, but we're working on a New York trip. Oh, yeah. <laughs> Uh, Brian hopefully we not, can do. Brian little. does not care that there's a baby attached to my hip. He has to I come with I am court. sorry. There is a super boothers onesie on the way. Nice. I will definitely put that photo. And for people um, who care, there is a photo I put up in the on the Facebook group. So I'm not generally a big sharer of personal stuff, but I felt like with the community that we built, I made a lot of great friends. You know, with our listeners, so I kind of, it just kind of felt right to share some pictures, and I'll probably keep doing that as long as it's not annoying. So let me know if it gets to be annoying. I will tell you when it gets annoying. Thank you. <laughs> um. <laughs> so having said that, I'm jealous. I would have loved to have been there. I was following your Instagram, all your stuff, and it looked amazing. Tell us more about this show. Like, How does the show compare to the other shows, BoothCon, Expo? What's, what, how does it compare? What's the experience You know, like? it is – the experience changes for me every single time we do an event. You know, it was – it's one thing whenever we go to Australia. It's another when we go to PBX. This one was an entirely different experience. There was people from Nigeria that traveled all the way to Leicester United Kingdom to learn about photo booths. That is just baffling to me. It is just – the p- amount of people that listen to this show all over the world simply astounds me. It is it's crazy. Man. I saw it the picture. is so shocking to me that something that we say just from you and I talking about what crazy thing happened this weekend or what crazy email we got, someone in Australia, India, Japan, Brussels, I mean Spain, Portugal, Italy. It is so shocking to me that everyone has the exact same issues. It it, it is so much of. I, I'm trying. I'm trying to explain how like the, just the global impact that this show has is baffling. 
I mean, that, that's such a humbling thing to hear because we, when we... That's the know, word, do, humbling. Yeah. When we do this show, it's just us chatting, right? We don't, we're not really thinking consciously about people in Nigeria or Australia listening and getting benefit out of it. And then when you go to these events and you meet these people, it's a great reminder that people do benefit from it. And not only that, it's like the global globalization of this industry. As you say, that's something that we talked about at BoothCon with with uh, the audience, it seems like people generally have the same issues around the world. It's not well, like, like, yeah. One thing that I get a kick out of is I have met people in Australia. I have met people in the U.S. and I have met people in the U.K. that are all so similar. Like, for example, with, I can't mention names here, but it's like everyone has a clone of themselves in a different part of the world. Doppelganger. It is so it is so there are photo booth doppelgangers. I because there's someone in the US that everything about them, the the company that they have, the branding that is smack dab the exact same thing that someone else is doing in the UK, just a different version. It's the UK version of them. Continuing on is the is the Australia version of the it is shocking to me that they're and these are all coincidences or coincidences, like- such coincidences, like just the personalities, just you know, not necessarily like inflection or whatever. I'm not I'm not saying anything like that, but just like the same type of branding, the same type of style, like all of that. There's just a doppelganger somewhere else in the world. It's just – it's so crazy to me. Now, these people from Nigeria, I, I saw the picture you had of yeah, them. Yeah. Did you actually speak speak to them? Like did you find out why they took that? Yeah, huge yeah, trip? yeah. What are they struggling with? So, so she um, – we went – I did my uh, my talk on you know automation and workflows and that is a big topic to talk about first thing in the morning. I mean – that's like putting an accountant up there and expecting me to memorize numbers. I mean, it is a you might need more than a hat. Yeah, suit. yeah, it's a it's a big. I mean, you need a Natural. I'm, I mean, you. It's a big chunk to take on first thing in the morning. She was so brave. She asked a question. She's like, Ryan, how do I do this? How do I start? And the question that she asked was just so like broad. I'm like, I go, come talk to me after. We'll have a chat. We sat down for an hour. That afternoon, and we went over everything. And I don't, I, I don't think I intended for it to go for an hour, but it was just, um, you just kind of jive well with certain people. And she was so hungry for the information, and she came all the way from Nigeria. I'm like, please let me know what else I can do to help you. Like, it, it, it was she was she had come across, I guess, the concept. Um, I looked in Nigeria, and there's like two photo booth people in the entire country. <laughs> You know, she was ready to, you know, smack down the money and buy a mirror booth. And I wish that she wasn't exactly as technical. I go, you know, you kind of need to start off with something smaller first, master that, then we can go to like a mirror booth. But if you don't know how to work your phone, you know, let's let's work on an iPad booth first before you jump to, you know, a mirror booth. So this is someone that was looking to get into the business. It wasn't an existing boother in Nigeria. Correct. Gotcha. Correct. How does that feel? Like we talk about the global impact. To me, it's crazy. I mean, the show does this, but when you do a one-on-one, like there's someone in the corner of Nigeria implementing what Ryan Salinas told her from like, from, it's just so weird. Yeah. How do you, I need to watch my mouth a little bit more. (laughs) You've offended people in so many countries. I I have offended people. In every language, race, religion, and creed. Thank you. Good night. Um, there's, there's no. Uh, it's, it's equal distribution for sure, for sure. So th- I don't know what happened. Um, I, I don't know the details. And if someone would like to enlighten me, that'd be fantastic. Um, but a speaker that was supposed to speak on day two didn't speak for whatever reason or not. Um, and I don't, I don't know the backstory behind it. But I got a text message saying. Hey, listen, do you think that you could, you know, do another talk? I'm like, sure. What would you like? Here's your choices. I mean, because I have, I mean, I have presentations that I've done previously. And whenever I got up on day two to do this unexpected talk, um, 
it was really great because I had a whole lot of people that just like wanted to be there and wanted to hear what I had to say. I don't know why you people are crazy, but it it was what was the topic? I let them pick. I let, let them choose. pick. I was like, I'm here for you. You tell me what you want to hear. So we talked about everything. We talked about Instagram. We talked about uh, emails. We talked about uh, like things to say, you know, over the phone. Um, I went over costing sheet. And I think that the costing sheet is something that I'm a little passionate about just because it, I, w- I sat down in another, um, in another seminar and the question that was asked was how many are using a CRM currently? And this is a, in a room of about, I don't know, 50, 60 people and three people raised their hands saying that they currently use a CRM which means that the other 95% of the room didn't. And I found that shocking. What a, yeah, that, that was actually, are you talking about in Australia? No, no, in, in the uh, UK. This also yeah, in the UK. I remember that also happening in Australia, and it is shocking. And it's, it's, it's a big shame because all the benefits that you can get, like you're talking about with the workflows and automation by using a system, I am also shocked that most people aren't using it. And I don't know why. They're not. Are they not aware? Are they? Not, they can't justify the well, I, well, I, 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 I was talking with um, a couple of people over there, and one of the people that came up to them, oh, you know, do you have a CRM? You know, is this something that you're interested? In? Uh, you know, what do you use currently? And I guess the gentleman replied, pen and paper. Oh, oh, my heart. And 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 he and he goes, well, I don't, I don't need it. I just do it myself. So I kind of use that a little bit as the inspiration for a costing sheet just because someone told me that, well, they don't have to pay it out. Therefore, they're saving the money. Therefore, they're making more. No, no. It's not the case. So I went over with the costing sheet and really with a fine-tooth comb, like I worked over how this is supposed to work. You need to go over the time that it takes for you to book the client. How long did it take you to email them back and forth whenever they initially inquired? How many hours did you go over with that? It doesn't even have to be hours. It can end up being like you know minutes or whatever. Going over the layout, going over changes, going over setup, a phone call with the planner. How long does all that take? Then go and check how long does it take you to place your orders for your supplies? How long does it take you to go purchase your props? How long does it take you to do the research on the internet? How long does it take you to go pull all your equipment, to clean your equipment, to pack your equipment, to load your equipment, to drive to the – think of all that time. You should be paying yourself for that time. So I try not to get all Judge Judy on people and start yelling. Um, But at the same time, like you have to pay yourself. There is no way that you can scale your business – without paying yourself. So I, and I won't go into it anymore, but, um, and the costing sheet is available for free and you can check it out in the show notes. Um, and, and the download is there. I think that's our but most, I, most popular download. Yeah, I think so too. Um, and, and, but anyway, just before you move off from that point, yeah, it, it reminds me of a, something you mentioned in an earlier episode about if you want to charge more, like you should be the type of person that spends on luxurious things as well. So you know what it feels like. Yeah. Holiday. I feel like a lot, yeah, I feel like a lot of people, you know, they are trying to squeeze pennies and save money on, you know, whatever. It, it could be software, it could be anything, right? And when you're operating from that mindset, you can't get frustrated when customers operate that way with you as well. So if you're penny pinching on things that can make your business better, your customers are going to do the same thing to you as well. As opposed to someone who invests in improving their workflows, improving their business, and has a better experience overall, you then um, attract people that may not be pinching pennies as much. And I think that's where everyone wants to be. Yeah, I got a lead from someone. She asked me for a glam booth. So uh, my glam booth is not the most expensive, but it is like one of the most common expensive things that I do sell. You know, I sent her everything that it includes, and then she sent me a thing that said – well, what's the cheapest option? Weddings are so expensive. I'm just looking. I stopped reading after that. I'm like, I'm just not even going to reply to you just because I'm not going to. I am too old and too wrinkly to be fighting with you on why you should hire me. I'm so sorry. 
I'm just not going to do it. I actually agree with you. And I think I, I look for those indicators as well. If I see a customer that's like that, I just don't even, I, I don't really pursue the sale because, and, and to be honest, we're fortunate to be in a position where we can do that. A lot of people that are starting out can't do that. And I wasn't able to do that in the past either. But it just shows you that as you get more experience and improve your business, you kind of move up the, the scale in terms of the customers that you can work with, right? So you start wherever you start, and then you can improve as long as you have the mindset that you're willing to invest and be open-minded in trying these different things and not just stay in your cocoon and I'm doing a pen and paper and it works for me and that's that. And I, I've mentioned I've met people in Vegas that they don't even have a website. It's legitimately... And, and they do hundreds of events on pen and paper. Blows my I mind. just don't get it. I just don't get it. I'm actually – so I'm about to buy um, a, a new business that's not related to um, – Oh, do tell. Photo, I'm not. I'm really not. Um, <laughs> I know. I'm really not. However, uh, the current owner – It's illegal. No, it's not. Yes, I'm selling cocaine because uh, I am Mexican and apparently that's what we do. Um, it's actually Adderall. No, I'm kidding. Adderall. Uh, no. So if you'd like to buy, you know, RyanSwings.com. Just to- <laughs> um, so anyways, uh, <laughs> the current owner of this company that we're buying, um, so this is a retail business. She writes everything down on a book and literally does like a carbon paper receipt. I'm like, you have got to be kidding me. And I helped her, uh, one day and, after about three hours of writing these little receipts down, I said, oh, no, honey. I said, I'm taking over now. We got on a POS system. I bought this lovely $350 receipt printer, and that thing prints 60 receipts a minute, so I will not be writing this stuff down anymore. But how was her reaction to the expense? Floored. Floored. She goes, why didn't I, I didn't know it was so cheap. Why didn't I do this forever ago? I, I told her, I said, guess how much this app costs? She said, how much? I said, zero. Nothing. The app is free. The only thing you pay for is a subscription if you want to, like, track, you know, employee hours or inventory or whatever. I'm like, there's just no excuse this day and age anymore to not do this stuff. Anyways, point of the story is uh, on the end of day one, we went to a lovely little pub called The Counting House in Leicester, and I had a conversation with Peter Holm. And it was such an interesting conversation. I was like, please let me record you. And he said, sure, absolutely. So uh, Peter, a little bit on Peter, he operates in Denmark and he operates a little, um, uh, it's like a camper um, that he outfitted for a photo or for a photo booth. Um, I believe we talk about it in the story, but the way how it came about was he saw the idea. His parents were having their 50th wedding anniversary and he decided that that's what he wanted to do. And anyways, take a listen. But when I started, I looked all over the place, searched every page I could find. No one had a photo camera, what I call Yours it. Yours is just like shooting fish in a barrel. You're just raking in the money. Yeah, yeah, yeah. <laughs> so how many of these are there in Denmark? This one, yeah. this just me. You, just me. that's it. Yeah. <laughs> But I mean, there's all, there might only be like uh, five photo booth events per week in all of Denmark. Oh, okay. I and I have that. Uh, maybe two or three, uh, two of those. Wow. And Denmark is not as big as. Yeah, yeah, yeah. There's five million we people. Like. Yeah, yeah. Uh, that's the city. That's one city with us. Yeah, yeah, yeah. <laughs> we yeah, have so many yeah. cities. So, okay, so how did you get started? I'm a photographer. I did weddings. I do. Uh, Fashion, a little bit. Yeah. I did everything, actually. I tried to... Uh, because I'm not a, I'm not a trained uh, or professional photographer. Sure. I'm a DIY, or what you call it. So I looked into every corner of the business. And uh, for fun... Oh, I, I, I saw that... Uh, actually, I started my business because I saw photo booths whatever called cancers whatever they, they have the you know the VV the bus yes and I thought that is brilliant sure I'm gonna buy a bus like that 
Only the problem is in Denmark, that is like five times the cost of the US For and the sure. UK. So out of reach. I mean, I'm just starting, I don't know anything about this. So I bought this old, old camber, which was about 200 bucks. Really? Yeah. And I spent three months putting all my, my original photo gear, my DS, my Canon how, how much did it cost you to, to fix it? Uh, maximum 2,000 US. Okay. So everything was, you know, less than 3,000 US to get started. Sure. Yeah. First event, if you can call it an event, yeah. was for my mom and dad's uh, 25th anniversary wedding. Sure. I just 50. set it up. 50th. 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 Yeah, That's 50. a big difference That's between 25 and 50. 50. Yes. I true, won't call true. them and tell them. And everybody <laughs> loved it. Yeah. The, the 90 year old and the 12 year old. And I was like amazed. This yeah. Is, this yeah. is brilliant. At the same time, I set up a Facebook page. That's all I did. No Google, no nothing. I just set up a Facebook page. No website. No, no. Nothing. Nothing. Facebook page with the photo camera. I don't know how they found it, but the marketing guy out of H&M in Denmark uh -huh. found, found a camera. You. I don't know how. And they booked me for the Roskiller Festival, which is the biggest festival in Europe. Music, really? music festival. Yeah. So I was with three days with H&M uh, &M at the festival. They didn't pay so, what they should have. But, but it was fine. It was good. Three days, good day for me. Do you realize, like, your first booking was, like, a major festival activation? That's hysterical to it, me. It, it is. It no, is. No, it's awesome. It's, it's so, it's, it was crazy. Oh, and uh, actually, that just put me... Where Did you I get wanted more to bookings be. from that? Did I get more than from? Well, you yeah, yeah, yeah. I actually from got it. one more because they have. A, then there's the 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 annual uh, fashion festival in Denmark, and H and M booked me for uh, one day to go, come to Copenhagen, mm -hmm. and the and the, the maybe the fesh, uh, the fashion festival itself knew about that because they booked me for three days at the fashion festival, so it was just. I, did, I didn't understand how That's this awesome. happened. Yeah. And we got a chance to talk a little bit more, but isn't that just the craziest first event ever? I love it. I love it. And I can imagine people being so frustrated listening to that where <laughs> how does this guy get such a great event right in the beginning and everyone else is struggling to pick up those events? Well, um, first of all, he's in Denmark where nothing exists except for yeah. like cold. But I do like, and, and it, I don't know if I heard this correctly, Ryan. He first wanted to build it for uh, an event for his family. Yeah, right? he bought he bought it. He, I guess he said that he bought it for two hundred dollars. Spent a little bit of money to fix it for his parents' fiftieth so, anniversary. Two hundred bucks. He probably bought the most rundown thing imaginable. Who cares? Fix it, it up a little bit. Still makes money. But what I love about that story is the resourcefulness, right? And it's amazing how many businesses how many successful businesses start with someone trying to make something for themselves trying to solve a problem they have and by doing that somehow magically you stumble your way into success because no one else is doing that right i just love that that's what i really love about our industry is you know the the types of photo activations that we do he even i he i couldn't have said it better he said the 90 year old and the 12 year old loved it like what we do is just so universally fun. Like it doesn't matter what age you are. Like it literally appeals to everyone. Now, Ryan, this was a great story. Before we wrap up the show, did you? Is there any other like people that you spoke to or that stood out, or is there any other questions that was that kept coming up from people in the UK? Like, can you give us a flavor for what they're thinking, dealing with out there? You know, if I get asked. What photo software I use one more time? I'm gonna put a bullet in my head because <laughs> um, that that was that was something that everyone was focusing on, and that is just not the point. I mean, the point really is what are you doing to differentiate yourself? You know, we had talked about there is one photo booth company. All they do is like uh, an RGB thing. Or a CMYK thing where, you know, it's like the outline of, you know, whatever it is kind of photo you're taking with the white background. Like they built a business off of that. 
Like you essentially could build a business off of, you know, a glitch over overlay or something like that. What I really think that people have a, a struggle with universally is just getting more bookings and people don't know how to put themselves out there or they don't know, you know, what, um, what free events to do that will get them to a better spot. So now on that note, this gentleman, like how, how do you advise people when this gentleman just got all these bookings and he didn't even have It's It's the Ryan Salinas of Denmark. <laughs> <laughs> well, I, I, think, I think the lesson there is to do unique things. For sure. Right? You do unique things. You don't have to put as much effort into chasing business. They'll find their way to you. 